in this video, I'm going to share with you about some of the tools and thoughts I've had related to AI in the last few months. You may have seen me interviewing people talking about AI recently, but I haven't really had a chance to go to the camera directly, just you and me having a chat. So I thought I would do that this time. So what have I been working on? Obviously, I'm not dead, so I've been using ChatGPT a lot. My observations about ChatGPT, the free version and the paid version. The free version says I'm not able to access the website information that you're throwing at me, so sorry, but I can only really help you from November 21st, uh, November 2021 and before that, which kind of sucks, but I can understand that they want you to pay for having access to the information that, uh, you know, you really want. It's a classic SaaS move. The 3.5 version, when it does give you good answers, is actually quite insightful, although sometimes can be highly inaccurate. So I try to do what I can to make it help me in the way that I want. For example, I was able to use uh, ChatGPT 3.5 to say, hey, I'm going to interview this person. Help me create some questions. And the questions were kind of generic. They weren't bad, but they weren't great. And so I said, hey, do me a favor. These suck. Give me something that's unique for this person, for this business that they run that you will not hear anyone else ask them. And when I got the responses, I was actually quite surprised because those are the questions that I'm already asking guests. With that kind of thoughtfulness, uh, I was really quite surprised that a free tool like ChatGPT could be able to spit that out. So I was kind of concerned for my future as a host when you you like to think that after interviewing over 130 people that you get a sense of like what's really valuable, what's something people would want to be asked, how can you make the interview unique for the guest and the audience. But at the same time, when an artificial intelligence can come up with those questions with the correct prompt, it kind of scares me a little bit because it means that maybe an AI will be doing my job in the future of interviewing people. Maybe not. Who knows? But for now, what I've decided to do is try to get these really quirky, unique questions and add them into my own repertoire. Now, if you aren't aware, when I'm interviewing people, and generally what I do is I plan nothing. I mean, I have a call with them before the interview on a separate day, so I get to know their personality, see if there's a good fit, and see if we can come up with a topic. But generally, I don't prepare any questions. I come to the interview and I ask them, tell me who you are, tell me what you're about, we'll start from there. And I listen to what they say, and I pull on a new thread based on something they've said in their response. And, and generally, I felt like that was quite valuable of an interview style because it requires you to listen very heavily. But ChatGPT basically upended that entire thing by not really knowing anything about this person and yet being able to tell me questions that I was going to already probably think of on the fly and ask without them ever really having the chance to talk to this person like I have. So again, quite scary, but also really cool. Um, now, I've also used the paid version of ChatGPT, but the paid version, um, I had a problem with. I paid for it in the first month it worked, but then I found that there's a bug that prevents paid subscriptions from sometimes activating. So even though I paid, I couldn't access the features after the first month. And I contacted ChatGPT's customer support. It took them two weeks to respond. I got kind of pissed. I did a, a dispute on my charge and it was uh, refunded to me. But then they charged me again the next month, which I'm kind of annoyed about because they didn't help me after waiting, after making me wait two weeks. And so I canceled my account and I created a new account. I'm working on the 3.5 version for now. I may give it another chance. I do know that that was a known bug. But I'm just shocked that after several months, they still haven't fixed that bug. Now, there's other tools that I've been looking at. One is Opus.pro. This clip uh, provider actually 
enabled me to fire my shorts editor because the quality of the clips and the speed at which it provides them and the cost that it that I incur in order to do it is really, really, really much more effective and cheaper than working with a person. So before this person would get the full episode and I would have them, uh, I would give them the freedom to determine what seven to 10 clips they would create from that episode. And it would take them about a week to get me those 10 clips, which when you're trying to grow your social media following, one clip post per day is really not significant enough, at least in the beginning when you're trying to gain exposure, uh, where consistency and um, you know posting a lot is key, and then you ramp that down as you grow. And uh, so with uh, Opus.pro, this clip provider... I can now give it the YouTube URL and within 10 minutes, it gives me 10 to 15 clips that have the, you know, it's cut into six by nine, uh, nine by 16, uh, you know, vertical format. And it has the subtitles timed, synced and colorized uh, almost to perfection. And it comes with emojis that are tied to the synchronized subs. And those are pretty spot on. There's a few things that they're missing from it that would make it, as good as my human editor, but I felt like it was already good enough that I could basically let go of that person. And so in that regard, I'm kind of scared for uh, creative people because their jobs are going to be destroyed by these AI systems because these AI systems can do their job much more efficiently than them um, for a fraction of the cost. Um, but as a business owner, it's exciting because I can much more easily get all of the content in bulk created so that then I can go into Buffer or, or have uh, an assistant go into Buffer and schedule those posts for me. And so it's an exciting time, but it's a scary time. And uh, there's a lot of other tools. I may come and talk about them particularly, uh, but I just wanted to kind of talk about ChatGPT um, and Opus Pro. Those are the ones I've been using the most and kind of how I felt about them, how I think about them. So uh, hopefully you liked this video, you found it valuable uh, from the point of view of a business owner, and uh, we'll be talking a lot more about AI and different things like that in the future. I'm going to make another video, and that video is going to talk a little bit more about um, AI at a high level and kind of uh, where I'm at, because there's this spectrum of people are afraid to people are excited, and I want to just talk about kind of my feelings related to that, because I think, again... On a human level and a professional level, there's multiple ways of looking at it, and, and I, I just want to share about that. So look forward to that episode coming out next.